Hi everybody and welcome back to the Gentleman's Talk and the dulcet tones of James Dean Littlejohn. How the devil are you? How have you been? How have you been coping? Easter break has been upon us. We have ha- all hopefully had lots of chocolate, probably overindulged. I know I have. I had three Mars bars today alone. That's fucking record breaking for me. Um, mainly because of this fasting thing. Um, I have this like... Because I'm eating in a certain window, it's, um, yeah, it, it ruins me because I'm just like fucking troughing down food. So I, I fast. So the, my eating hours, it's probably easier to say my eating hours. My eating hours are 12 till 7. So I am fucking troughing food down at 12 o'clock and, and, uh, and I'm still trying to get a balance. I ate loads of fruit stuff, uh, fruits and, and loads of sort of veg and everything else, but um, I'm still overindulging on the chocolate. And the excuse this week has obviously been Easter. So, um, yeah, that's where we are. That's where we are. That's, I'm not. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to dwell on it because there's nothing I can do about it. Yes, I have missed reflection. I was reminded by my very good friend, the Nelster, yesterday, and he said um, something that was very interesting, actually. And and it and it's it, he. You know, you can tell he listens to me a lot, and and he know understands me, uh, which is which is a fantastic thing to have someone in your friendship group um, that you can class as a very very good friend that knows you that well, um, and and that's the whole purpose. He's been listening to me talk for the last fifteen months. If he didn't know me by now, he's um, there's something wrong because they you know we we've he's overindulged on me if you like, which is a nice thing to say. Um, but yeah, he reminded me. He said, um, "No, James, I think you've lost." your motivation at the moment and I went I was put down I said to him that my excuse the week before was yeah you know I was reflecting at home and you know it was a bit blase and I apologized and then it was the Monday and I came around and did a did a podcast and then I sat for a week when I really had the ambition to do some more podcasts and then it fell round again to this week and um yeah exactly the same happened um I We'll caveat it a little bit with the fact that I was working yesterday till seven o'clock, but he said something actually. Oh, bloody hell, just knock some off the side. He said something, and this is what's gonna. I'm gonna read this out because uh, I think it's quite um, hilarious. Um, so he said, uh, I said to him, "Sorry, I was working." He turned around and said, "It doesn't matter. You would always. That doesn't matter. You would always find a way to find time to do a podcast." And he's right. And that is exactly where we're at now. Um, I've always said to you that Sundays were my peak day for reflection. I really like to sit down and engage with myself. I haven't done that. Um, I haven't reflected. I've been off my game. I've noticed today that you know I haven't fucking done anything today. Um, it's Bank Holiday Monday, and and I, and I fully appreciate. I'm trying to get a little bit of me time in, but it's it's drawn over. It's not. It's it's t- it's gone further than that again. It's gone back into this. I've lost motivation, and today it sort of slapped me in the face a little bit. I did feel a little bit uh, sort of kind of sad, a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit lonely. Um, it, there's no reason why. There there should be no reason why I feel lonely. Um, and and this would be anyone listening. Go, oh Christ! I need to get hold of James. It's not like that. It's not that type of loneliness. It's an individual loneliness. I don't feel lonely. I'm in the sense of my friendship group. Um, this whole process has allowed me to 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 have the right people around me. Um, I just haven't. I've just stopped engaging. I've just stopped opening and opening up, and I've been bottling a lot of things up. And yeah, it's taken its toll. I think, and it's got to the point where I've, I'm sort of feeling uh, that devalued, that demotivation. I've had a lot of knockbacks of recently um, with regards to I didn't. I wasn't successful when I went for the for the uh, promotional job. Uh, which knocked me back. I said it didn't, but it did. Um, and just a, f- a couple of things, you know, I've been doing all this artwork that, you know, it is, I'm very, very passionate about and, and I'm just not getting anywhere with it, any sales. Uh, it was it, What frustrated me the most was as soon as I offered one for free, um, fucking every man and his dog jumped on it because it was for free. And I was like, oh, fucking hell, you know, you, you, you know that, Anyway, this is why I don't do artwork to sell. This is this is why I don't do stuff to sell, and this is why I have fifteen pieces of these this artwork sat in my dad's office. My dad's been storing it for me. It's because I just struggle with that element because I I put so much into stuff, and you just think I know what that's worth. I know what that quality is, and it it just knocks me right back. And it that's when I I get devalued. I get I, and it's not a devalue through anyone else's fault of their own because at the end of the day. 
you know, we're, I know I understand we're in a cost of living crisis and no one really has that sort of, you know, funds to spend. But it's just a personal, it's, de- it's, it's, it's just disheartening on a personal level. Do you know what I mean? It's really hard to explain, but it's not hard to explain at all. It's, personally, I take it, I, I take it, uh, I, I, you know, I personally take it offensively. Not an offensive, that's the wrong word, fuck. I, I'm, I get disheartened, I get disheartened. Okay, and that's the structure of it. I, I Because I just... I want, I put so much into my to to what I do that I want people to enjoy it at the same level as I get from creating it. And my dad said, you know, and even my mum. I took another couple over at the weekend to my mum. She was like, "These are fucking fantastic." I was like, "Yes, I know they're fantastic." I was like, "She said, oh, you need to start selling them, James." I was like, "I fucking know you need to start selling them, but it's I'm not a seller. I'm not these. I'm, I don't know where to go, what to do, how to do it." I just chucked some fucking bits on Etsy, but then you have to pay for promotional things, and you know, you that's it's it's a constant outlay, especially when you think I'm, I've made fifteen of these uh, these items. And I know I'm digressing a little bit here, but it's passion, and and but what that does is all of these knockbacks they build up, they 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 kind of they they just demotivate you in general, demotivate you, and. It's really, it's just hard work. It really is hard work, and you get people going, "Oh, I've seen your art, and I love it." And 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 I hear that all the time. And I hear it all the time. And then you sit there and you go, "Okay, well then share the share the fucking post, or fucking comment on the post, or fucking like it. If you like it that much, then do that. Just do that. I'm not asking you to pay for it. To try and see if someone pay for it. And it's it's ironic because I've been on the other side for years where I've not needed that, and I, and I I now feel the other side where I need that kind of exposure through social media to try and make a better awareness and you know I'm not I'm, I don't hold anybody at fault for not doing it because I was one of those people that didn't share comment like etc but anyway as I digress into that the problem is it does it does dishearten me I do get and this is where the ADHD and I, and I spoke about it on my premium podcast to talk about this and um, for me that's that kind of knockback really does upset me and then it just kind of I with the demotivation comes the lack of um, the lack of everything lack of empathy I get stressed I get depressed and you know I just stop doing the things that I like doing and one of those things is this podcast I absolutely love doing it I have absolutely I can tell you now uh, from the bottom of my heart I have forced myself to do this podcast now I hope it doesn't come across that because as soon as I start talking it's a completely different world but I just want you to know where I'm coming from really and why I'm been a bit disparate and it's mainly because of that it's just purely the fact that it's very very lonely when you're trying to succeed um, and it you you put all of your heart soul and a lot of finances like I said I'm you know I'm in the pocket of about 450 pound by creating those bits of artwork that I'm not seeing come back as quick as I thought you know it's been four months you hope you've made a couple of sales by then but I haven't so it's learning and it's a minefield doing podcasts was a minefield at the start and it still is a minefield now for me now I don't get the big hits on that so you can imagine from from my perspective as somebody who is fucking trying and this is the reality I think of most men and it will lead into the the title a little bit that most a lot of men try and try and try and fucking try and they don't succeed and I feel like I'm one of those people at the moment you know I, I'm, I'm very very confident in my ability um, I love what I do and I think I create things that are visually stunning and I, I put a lot of heart and soul into my podcast so hopefully I'm bashing your ears with some beautiful tones um, so when you when you make that constant drive it's like if you were in work and you were constantly doing something to impress, or not even impress, but you were going above and beyond and you weren't recognised. How how much do you feel devalued and demotivated at work when that happens to you? Well, I'm getting that in work. I'm getting that in my social life, and I'm getting that in my personal life, you know? So that devalue bit is really, really, it just, it wipes you out, especially when you, um, you know, you, you suffer from ADHD as well, and you suffer from mental health conditions, um, I do. I'm a nightmare. It's, it's an absolute nightmare. And even even uh, my missus has sat down and gone, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I just you know I should be laying fucking flooring. I've got I've got this abundance of fucking ideas in my head, but I'm so demotivated at the moment that it's it's impossible for me to do anything." This morning I was in bed, so I went to bed last night, 
Um, everyone was up at crack of dawn, and um, I stayed in bed until twelve o'clock. Genuinely stayed. I just I got up and I went. I don't want to. I don't want to face the world today. And I went back to fucking bed. And then I I got up again an hour later and I went nope. And then when I got up at twelve o'clock because um, my family had gone away. So um, the, basically, long story short, they do a um, a an annual sort of occasion if you like it's a it's something they do annually there is a word for it you're going to tell me afterwards if i don't remember it um something you do annually <laughs> it's completely and utterly gone from me um it becomes a tradition that's the word i'm fucking looking at someone's screaming at me i know nelson nelson would have texted me straight away uh, tradition becomes a family tradition that every year uh, annual tradition they go to butlins uh, with um, my wife and the the children and um, my mother-in-law and they just go down and have a fab week it's all you know it's all all inclusive so they just go down there and it's it's, it's within our budget level and they do that so uh, and the kids get to go swim in watch the i think tonight they're watching abba uh, tribute and um it's fat it's a fab time for them not my cup of tea which is why i don't go i don't just go for that reason because there's just a fucking nightmare of noise overwhelming um you know senses massive over sense ma- massive sensory overload for me in a in a situation like that that it just stresses me out um so i sit with the boys so i sit and i say boys my i talk about my dogs i've got i've got three dogs and i just sit with them and we just chill out for the week uh, but it, it again it does bring in that little element of loneliness when you do that um especially when you've had a week off before doing the quiet stuff so i've got all this motivation and everything so but anyway they went away and um I got out of bed to see them off, basically. Everyone was like, see you later. And I was like, oh, I'll get out of bed. So fucking hell, I got out of bed. Went down and sat on the sofa. And um, I didn't, I, I literally come out at half past eight to set up for a, a podcast. I've done nothing all day. That's how demotivated I am at the moment and, and how isolated internally I feel. So it's like a knock on effect. And, and it's just, it's crippling. And, you know, I sort of kind of, it's it's times like this when I don't know how to deal with things. And I kind of go, fuck, I'm a bit of an emotional train wreck, but I'm one of these ones that don't show emotion. So it just bottles up into anger. And then I just fucking shout. This morning I was, they were trying to pack their car and I came outside and the the car's a little Cleo and um, fucking putting the bags in. And I was like... It wouldn't, they wouldn't fit, all fit in the car. And I looked and I just fucking belted out. Like, literally, I was like, you're so fucking disorganised. No one's disorganised. I was just in a shit mood. I was fucking tired, demotivated, depressed. But every fucker felt that. So they're going away, literally going away on the week's holiday. And the thing that they've been left with is fucking wanker boy here shouting his fucking mouth off, isn't it? You know, going fucking, you're so disorganised. Literally left on a negative. No wonder, you know, and that's the problem is when you get like that, it's a, it's, it's a really lonely place. And I create that loneliness myself. Christ, I've spoke to you numerous times about pulling yourself up and recognising it. Unfortunately, I'm just in this little place where it's a bit of a difficult one to pull myself up a little bit, you know? I don't know why. I, I will get there. Um, oh, by the way, I'm fasting, so I'm on water. Oh, that was a beautiful. Sorry, I get um, dry mouth because I'm not. I'm not been as regular this, so I'm not used to producing that much saliva, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it. That's where it's at. That's where it's at, and it kind of really leads me into like, I I heard a quote earlier on, and it was it was again. I seem to get into this mood and this mode when I'm in this mode. My my uh, German Shepherd, um, Casper, he's a white German Shepherd. Fucking beautiful boy, he really is. Um, he's a handsome little devil, um, and he's the one that saved saved me. I think massively when I was uh, first going in my my world of depression from some of the early start times when you when, when I used to talk about this, uh, my early podcasts. Um, he he saved my life. He got me up and walking. He he my life revolved around him, you know, and um I he knows when I go like this because he tends to be a little bit more cuddly, so he sits there today. He's been a bit cuddly, been a bit quiet because he's just, you know, he doesn't know where I feel and he's probably feeding off my emotions cuz dogs like that. He's been with me for 10 years, nearly 11 years, and um he's been through every good, bad and sad point of my life. He's always been there. Um, not a day I'm ever going to want to see is to say goodbye to him, but he is a beautiful bastard. And, um, he, he's been sat there today, you know, sort of kind of, um, just cuddling up and stuff. So it's, it's been nice, but he's obviously noticing it and you do get like that. You do, you, you, there's nothing you can do about this. Men sort of kind of 
they just get into these lulls. But what I was doing was when I was flicking through my TikTok and all that jazz, I came across a Joe Rogan quote. And um, I love Joe Rogan. I think he's absolutely fantastic. Great fucking voice for the world. And um, But anyway, he, he said, you know, most men live in quiet, li- live lives in... in oh, fucking hell, James. Spit out. <laughs> most men live in quiet desperation. Or live lives of quiet desperation. I think the way that he said it. Um, and I said... I was, sort of did a bit of research on it really and i was a bit like oh okay then and actually found out it was actually like hey i think his name was henry david theroux i think his name was and um he was the one that famously stated it and as he stated it his, his word was the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation and it is we do we sit there in quiet desperation like we all have these little things um and, and it was ironic because i read that quote from joe rogan and then the next quote was a uh, a twitter feed from a famous woman um who turned around and said you know why do men constantly uh, or sorry keep creating podcasts to talk about their mental health and i was like <laughs> and then someone put um why do women keep creating uh, create only fans just to sell their beavers? <laughs> just, do you know what I mean? And it was kind of like, um, I don't know, it, it sort of resonates because we do a lot of a lot of the podcasts I, I view, watch, listen to, um, depending on where, what sort of platform I'm on. There is talking about mental health, which is from my perspective, is really, really good. I think it's amazing. But it's ironic how a woman says, you know, men aren't in touch with their feelings. Um, and men you know they never talk about their feelings and this is why we've got massively high suicide rates because we don't do it and then the the minute we do and we're starting to try and build ourselves up and these podcasts are popping up all over this you know it, talking about awareness on men's mental health and like i said living in quiet desperation suffering from stress anxiety we all go through these battles and as soon as we start doing something about it in some form, because we, at the end of the day, we still get a little bit reserved. I've still got a friend of mine, 29 years. I still feel weird talking to him about my mental health. It's really, I just, I just do. And it's not, a, it, that's not even like, even, you know, we're best fucking friends. But I wouldn't talk about my mental health. I don't know why. So I, but this medium, me talking into a microphone with a bit of music in the background, alone, Although there is X amount, you know, 3,200 downloads, I think, Matt, which is fucking fantastic. Um, even though I've got to that point, and there's a lot of men listening to me, I don't, it's not me talking to you directly. So for me, it's, I don't know, it just works. And then you get this this fucking famous woman popping up going, why do men do it? But Mate, just fucking be happy that we're talking. Or If you don't like it, just don't listen. You don't have to fucking listen. You don't have to press play. It's not being forced down your fucking throat. It's like when you see shit on, um, you know, TikTok that offends you or fucking Facebook or whatever like, social media site and people start, start typing fucking butt hurt. That, this fucking gave me real, uh, real fucking, you know, they strike. You know what I mean? They flare up and you go, why? Just fucking scroll by, mate. It's, this isn't intended for you, buddy. But it's like we're in that nation where everybody just feels that we need to pick on something. And Christ, men are doing something about it, trying to get in touch with our side as much as we can by just letting everybody know that it's okay to talk. And um, this is the way we're doing it. And then we're being criticised for it. That's fucking absolute bonkers. Bat shit crazy, I'll tell you. So anyway, so I, so I you know, I did a little bit of research, you know me. And, um, and and what he thinks, so Henry David threw, or following on from, from Joe Rogan, but he seems to think that it's like a, the misplaced value is what causes uh, like a void in our lives. And you'll listen to this, and it may resonate, but a lot of men, what they tend to do when they have this void in this life, um, they, they tend to sort of pump things or fill that void, pump things maybe, um, they fill that void with like money, possessions and accolades you know and it's very much what men do how many of you know men that like i'm, I'm a prime example of somebody with, that would do this so i don't i play the xbox and um i don't play it as much anymore i really don't but when i did i only played games that gave me the achievements that gave me the accolades anything that didn't give me much achievements i wasn't interested in i was i was constantly focused on that reward mechanism and I did exactly the same when I was in my quiet desperation and I was sat there fucking depressed as hell. I got myself into almost, you know, £30,000 worth of debt because I was buying things, selling them at fucking quarter of the price just to get rid 
just because and I'd never looked I never had a grasp on my fucking on any of my finances until the last two years or probably since I started this podcast and I even then I wouldn't even say it's until the last couple of three months that I've really gone fucking sort your shit out James and it took me to finally sit down and go fucking have a word but I did I, I, I filled my life with possessions I filled my life with you know accolades so whatever i could go and do so yeah there's my weight board i've got a thousand pound weight board all the fucking gear sat there and i used to just look at it i bought a fucking mountain bike like literally it's about a thousand pound i think it was um mountain bike i rode it twice on fucking pavement to work it was a proper off-road mountain bike it was bright fucking yellow disc brakes hydraulics the fucking lot sat there mainly in my fucking room where i was staying away from everybody on my own And it used to sit there. And when you walked into my room, I used to have 20 pairs of fucking Adidas trainers, all pristine, lined up, my bike on the left, my wakeboard, and all my gear. And it just used to be a a shrine of what I've got. Look what I've got. It means fuck all, though, mate. I mean, I'm I'm now 42. I'm encroaching on 42. Shouldn't shouldn't push it way too early. Now encroaching on 42. And I'm trying to get rid of all that shit. And I don't want to replace it because it's just full of shit. It's just, it's just crap. I don't want it. And that was the mindset of me. That was what I was doing. And then, and from an outside, it looks, it, it probably looks really fucking arrogant. Look at this guy. He's fucking got. I like I said, I remember buying, and I spoke about this in my podcast. I remember buying like twenty pairs of sunglasses. I couldn't wear sunglasses because I couldn't put contacts in, so I had to have normal glasses. So why have I got all these sunglasses? Well, I don't fucking know. I just put them on the side, and then I used to fucking give them to my mates that's ludicrous there was no emotional attachment to it it was just a waste of money and now i'm paying the price and i keep talking about this paying the price for those problems if you don't hit them head on and it's really really and we do we sit there and we and what we try to do is we try to think that those things will make us happy but they don't and then what we do is we continually seek that high we continuously try to find a way to be happy by buying more stuff irrelevant and and even to the point where i stopped doing things like going out on adventures and i mean i've done some great stuff but i stopped doing adventure stuff just to have stuff in my possession well a memory is more valuable because you know at the end of the day when you do finally shuffle your mortal coil as i've probably said to you before everything you've had or owned gets handed back the only thing you take with you is love and memories and that is the truth of it there's nothing else beyond that. So why are we wasting it on trying to fill our void with stupid possessions and not filling our void with personal time, loved ones, making memories, getting people around to make these memories, even if they're a bad memory. No, no memory is bad. Maybe how you perceive something as being bad, but it's still, I've got some fucking memories that at the time were fucking awful. I was like, fucking hell, don't, especially drinking. <laughs> but, but I now look back and go, that was hilarious mate at least i say i've done it i remember one time where fucking i was i was young as young dumb and full of cum and i was with my best mate kieran we were walking down this road we just come out this fucking nightclub and there was a fucking dumper truck on the side and it had the key in and i remember and it was down the fucking thing it was about one o'clock in the morning and i remember jumping in this and starting the fucking thing and I looked at my mates and they were like, yes. And I envisioned driving down the fucking road pissed. N- zero fucking care about the consequences. Literally, that was... It, I saw my mates were laughing. I'm in a fucking bright yellow dumper truck. Pissed out of my fucking tree. This is like fun zone. Now, we all know where that could have gone. That would have fucking probably not been... I wouldn't have broke... I probably would have gone through fucking windows and all sorts. But I just... A click. Bosh. You need to fucking turn that off, big boy. <laughs> you need to fucking get out of here. But it's, it, you know, anyway, I digressed into that. But it's just life, you know. You, you, you've got to put, you've got to try and dig into those memories. Hold on to those memories. And like I said, that that to me at the time could have gone catastrophic. And I could have, you know, lost my driving license, done any, got arrested. I would have lost, I would have got arrested, probably got fucking fined. It, right, it would have led to a criminal record. It would have been out of control. So, You know, you've got to, but at the time, luckily I made the right decision. But at the time, I look back then and I think it was hilarious maybe at the time. Next day, a little bit of anxiety. 30 years on, whatever it is, um, 20 years on, whatever. um, I think it's hilarious. 
no memory is bad. It's just when you look at it, and and that's the pro- that's the beauty of a memory. That's the beauty of having that as a core memory. Whatever you do, if you've got that memory, no one can take it away from you, unless a disease comes along. Unfortunately, about Alzheimer's, and probably, you know, that's the, the the quiet desperation that we will live in then if we ever make that. And I don't talk about that because I know somebody that's um that that's got that at the moment so uh an older friend of mine and um yeah it's um it's it's you know you can see he's he's been diagnosed been seeing signs of it so it's you know it's a horrible thing to have anyway so i digress into that but yeah men live like sort of lives of quiet desperation and it couldn't be any more true and we are trying to change that absolutely this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to change that i'm trying to push my myself out there a little bit and let people know um i've got some good friends that do keep in touch with me in fact actually i must whilst i remember because I'm, I'm a nightmare for remembering um my good mate um that i spoke about a couple of weeks ago at the end of my podcast he's doing his um he's raising 10k i said to him he was raising i can't remember what i said it was um 10 t- i think i said i think i said he was doing uh 10 miles a day um for ten thousand pounds but he's he's it's 10k for 10k um so that's what he's trying to do um and, and he's trying to do it that that way so I, I wanted to get it right because i wanted him to um absolutely smash it a smash out of the back and especially as he's you know he's doing this for mental health and he's trying to do this at a time when people just don't have the money and it makes it even more challenging again he'll probably go through this really horrible time where he won't see his fund raising going up and you know for him that will dishearten him he needs to keep motivated but it's really really difficult to do that and that's the the craziness about it is he could get demotivated to the point where he won't do it, especially as he's on TikTok, he's on social media. Um, he's absolutely, in fact, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually plug him on here because I think it's really, really valuable. Um, <clears throat> I'm on TikTok as well, but um, this isn't about this isn't about me. So his name's Mark. He's on TikTok. Um, I'll just go to his profile and make to see what it is. So his profile name is Lomage78, L-O-M-A-G-E-78. Um, he's doing uh, some charity stuff, really sort of raising some really good awareness on men, men's mental health. And I think it's absolutely fantastic what he's doing. So um, jump on and grab a, have a chat with him, follow him and watch his journey. So um, another person who is absolutely trying to change the way that we look at mental health. Um, and again, I, I, I'm in talks and I'm waiting for him to deliver um, a couple of uh, there's this company called the Big Moose and they do uh, they deal with men's mental health. Um, I'm plugging all over today and um, they're going to give me a couple of bottles. One's going to be sort of uh, complete and one's going to be broken and they do men's mental health. So I'm going to do something in a collaboration piece, make some artwork um in resin and everything else of, a, of a, an empty bottle or a smash bottle and a complete bottle and some sort of wording we're going to try and turn over so you know to say that you know with support passion and everything else we can all bolster ourselves up and make ourselves complete again um so it's, there's going to be a nice little story so look out for that in the future there's some big stuff i really want to do some big stuff this year um so yeah how so how the devil do we get past this? <laughs> that's the, that's the uh, how the devil's the thing. How do we get past this? Well, I don't really know. For me, um, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a difficult one. But I, I think for me, the 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 first way I'm tackling it is by jumping straight back on my podcast. Here I am, the dulcet tones of James Dean Little John, because this is what I enjoy. This is what I enjoy. This is how I communicate. This brings me down. This helps me sleep because it's my form of talking, and I think that whatever you're going through if you're going through something like this then you need to try and press reset i think that's a really important because what i have done and and what i did understand this afternoon when i was looking at podcasts uh, sorry i was looking at uh, tiktoks uh, and i was looking at mental health and a lot of it was on the basis of i've shut myself down so i've stopped communicating with people I have tried to communicate with a few people, but I've not received much back, which is a little bit of a disappointment. I am in this positive vibe group at the moment. Um, I've been in there for well over a year and um, we've just there's four of us in there and we've just kind of bomb bursted out with completely lost motivation. And um, I have tried to put videos in and stuff like that to try and bolt, you know, try and get the spirits raised. But it's just fallen at the wayside. It's actually become quite a little bit of a negative place at the moment, which is really horrible because the whole purpose of it was to get us together and get us chatting on a daily basis but it's just it's faltered it's just fallen off at the seams a little bit um so 
all of the little things that I had in place that that have that used to perk me up, like chatting daily, um, you know, uh, getting getting out on reflection walks, listening to music, uh, doing my podcast at least one to two times a week. Um, all of these things that I used to do um, have all just completely gone. The only thing that I think that has kept me slightly afloat is this fasting thing. is is because I'm I'm seeing major transformations in my body. I'm absolutely shedding weight, um, but in the right way. So for me, because I'm seeing positive results from that, that's the only thing that's keeping me positive at the moment. Especially, like I said, I've had a lot of knockbacks with work. Although, you know, I shouldn't have... I, I gotta remember sometimes I am only 41 and I'm sort of aiming into the the sort of senior senior leadership space with people that are in their sort of 50s with a wealth of knowledge and experience I'm not saying I don't have it but I know I am I am sort of kind of getting in there a little bit early um but that's my passion that's my drive um but knockbacks like that you know when you lose your friendship groups a little bit like say when you when you lose that communication value all of those things just make yourself isolate and that's when men become quiet that's when we shut down that's when we we just focus on ourselves but then we become angry all of the negative results of not taking care of your mental health are what result in all of that flatlining and and for me that's that's where i'm at that's where i'm at um, that, that's the honesty of it but what I've had to do is so today this afternoon <clears throat> whilst I was sort of not doing a lot I was actually writing a little bit of a list in terms of what I'm going to achieve tomorrow what I'm going to achieve on Wednesday just to give myself that focus and I spoke about men ha- needing purpose and that's the that's the that's the truth of it if you don't have purpose you will just you will just go back into a shell You need that drive, that purpose. And I think that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to grab that back um, as much as I can. I've been writing down all sorts. I was writing down little notes. Um, I've I've been trying to just do little bits to keep me afloat. But this is the day dot. Jump on. Have a chat, mate. Um... So yeah, that's basically where we are. That, and I, for, for me, if I was going to offer you some sort of advice, because that's what I'm here for, do look at yourself. And, and look around you. Look at what you're not doing that you do when it makes you happy. So if you're not doing something and you're like, okay, well, normally I do that. So I'm being a bit lazy because I'm just... Because we can all do it. Every single human being is capable of just going, fuck this, and shutting down. Everybody is capable of that. There will be a point where most human beings will get to that fucking point. I can guarantee it. We were all we all have burnout. We all can, you know, completely shut down. I need that shut down period. But it's watching how long that period goes on for. Like, I know that my period, if you like, of of shutting down has gone too far. It absolutely has, because I'm I'm now into my second week off work. And because I've got no routine and I've not done a lot, I've just gone into this really quiet place. And then the thoughts come in, and then the desperation comes in, and then I just go into this world of depression. Because at the end of the day, like I said to you, depression for me, uh, the PTSD, it, it's not, it's, it's there. It's it's always been there. It, and I, it's really hard for me to get out of that cycle. Really hard for me. And I have to constantly work at it. You will have to constantly work at it. It doesn't come easy. And I've said this, and I've always said this along, it does not come easy. But what we can do is keep at it. But when we lose sight, as I have done recently, you need to reflect on what you've lost sight on. I've lost sight on a lot of things. I've lost sight on, you know, my social engagement. I've lost sight on my motivation. I've lost sight on my love, my affection. Everything just seems to have dwindled down. From yesterday, I was like, I'm not happy. Especially, I think with my family going away for a week, I know it's that family tradition for them. uh, And I know why we do it. Someone has to be back to look after the dogs because it's fucking expensive to get someone to care for your dogs. And um, so it's always worked. And it's never really been a big problem for me before because we didn't go... So the last two years, I I must um, acknowledge that we didn't go the last two years or they didn't go the last two years because uh, of the pandemic and everything else. So this year is their first, sorry, yeah, this year is their first year going back. Uh, Did they go in last year? No, it was deferred to this year. Um, So it's it's kind of had a couple of years and these are the two years I've moved back home and, and settled in. And this is the first time I've not been around them. So for me, that's probably where I'm at. I'm a little bit, I've got a bit angry because I'm like, oh, 
I'm in a demotivated place. I'm not 110%. And now I've not got this little functioning family that normally I'm there to protect. So you kind of go into this place, well, fuck it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, And again, it falls back into that. The, the man without the purpose, doesn't it? Um, and, and it's, you know, it's very much like a man without sort of purpose, um, quiet desperation. They all just seem to fall, in, fall inside of each other. And... I don't know. It's where I'm at. It's where I'm at. So I think that for me, the reset point has come along. That's the beauty of that. That's where that's where I'm at now. So the reset points come along where I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to jump out there. I need to re-engage my friends. Absolutely. Um, I think that because I've pulled away from them, it's it's made things really, really difficult. So like I said, it's, this is going to be for me a short and sweet one, really, um, because I'm doing I'm I'm actually going to do a full week. So I don't want to bore your ears too much. So I've kept it short and sweet. I know I'm going to get a bit of a bollocking off of uh, off my 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 good friend Nell stuff and not giving him the full hour um that he said oh you normally reflect for an hour buddy <laughs> so i'm now i'm gonna get a bollock in but i don't mind that because that means that's engaging so he's you know he's shouting at me and keeping things going um so yeah short and sweet for me today um just to really get me up really to get me out and a bit again and, and plus because i've been talking to you for me now i'll go away and i will naturally reflect on what i've spoke about that's the enjoyment piece for me so i i will take all this on board and i'm hoping it boosts me gives me that kick up the ass that i need so tomorrow i want to do a few things i wouldn't mind doing another live i'm going to do a little live on podbean as well so that's going to be a fantastic little day um i don't know how i'll structure it but i'm trying to give myself that purpose i'm trying to pull myself out of my quiet desperation at the moment and i want to sort of drive in to just business as usual business as usual so please please listen to the rest of the week um and i i'm sorry that i've been a little bit disparate like i said we're all going to go through these phases and it's really really hard to find drive really really hard to find motivation um when you're you're receiving these knockbacks but this is where our strength this is where our resilience and this is where our empowering sort of nurturing this whole well-being and focus all comes into play do what we do that makes us happy. You've come along to this whole journey for the whole time, so you must have. You must be doing something by now in listening to me that is making you happy. If you're doing that, then absolutely fantastic. Really, really good stuff. If you're not doing that and you'll notice you're not doing it, then get back into it. Have a little cheeky reflection. Have a little tiny word with yourself. There's no problem talking to yourself. Have a little word with yourself. See what you're not doing, why you're not happy, and then try and pull that back in line again. Try and find the time to do what is what was making you happy. Because at the end of the day, that's all we have. We only have memories and love to take with us. And if you're going to go through life, then let's try and go through life to be happy. Let's try and hold on to the things that make us happy. Let go of the negativity. Let it go. Let it fucking wash out the sea. I don't want to see it anymore. And then that's where we go. Whatever that be, let's, let's take the next steps to get us back out again. So thank you very much for listening to me. I really, really appreciate your time. Um, yeah, smash out the bag, please. Um, stick with me. Uh, I'm going to come back. It, it is here. The motivation is, um, even though I'm looking around my room now going, fuck hell, James, and it's almost screaming inside of me. Um, you know, I, I'm hoping it's there. I really do. But thanks for listening to me. Take care, everybody. And get out amongst nature. The sun is shining. Spring is here as well. Spring is here, people. The happiness is going to be around the corner. So we can get outside, have barbecues, have socials, get together with friends. All of the good stuff that we live for. So brilliant. Thank you very much for taking your time and listening to me. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care.